This video is about the Gothic classic continuity. The story of the Hashishin, as well as that of their leader, Zubin, begins before the time of the Kingdom of Mertana. Around 20 or 30 years ago, before the Holy Robar became Enos's chosen one, the orcs waged war against the humans living in Mertana. Any detailed information about this war is unavailable, and it is sometimes called the First Great Orc War, but this terminology is incorrect, as it doesn't really make sense. You see, in the Gothic lore, I found three different versions of the First Great Orc War, with the oldest referring to a war in Corinnus, the second version referring to the war we are going to talk about, and the third version clearly talks about the Holy Robar's conquest. So long story short, either the lore got a little confused, or the in-universe NPCs suck at naming important events. I am actually willing to bet on both. However, we are going to talk about the second version. The only information known about this war is the orcs won. They conquered Mertana, killing or enslaving any remaining humans. However, slavery in of itself is a little more complicated for the orcs than it is for humans. For example, they allow slaves to participate in gladiator fights, and those who do well earn the orcs respect and can even gain their freedom from it. There's more to this, but we will talk about the entire orc culture another time. Back on topic, one of the humans enslaved by the orcs during the war was a man named Zubin. Originally from Mertana, Zoom proved his strength and was permitted to fight in the arena. It was not only his incredible fighting skill that earned him respect, but also his shared belief of our culture, including worshipping Baliar instead of Enos. At some point, the orcs no longer saw him as a lowly gladiator and granted him his freedom. Zubin made use of this newfound independence and wandered south. Eventually, he found the ancient staff of the Eternal Wanderer, the first chosen one of Enos, and took it into his hands. Once the former gladiator picked up the artifact, Beliar spoke to him to wander as far south as he can and establish a community. Zubin did as he was asked, ramming the staff of the Eternal Wanderer to the ground and founded Ishtar alongside the tribe of the Ashishin, followers of Beliar. The worshippers declared Zubin to be a chosen one of Beliar, and his power was proof enough as he taught a few of his followers the secrets of black magic. In other words, there is now a church of Beliar with a heavy influence of orc culture. Thanks to Zubin's good relations with the orcs, his new tribe and Ishtar found rapid growth becoming a force to be feared within 50 short years. Their society is simple. The merchants and warriors pay tribute to the black mages, the priests of Beliar. The black mages, on the other hand, pay tribute to Zubin, the chosen one of Beliar. In doing so, they hope that their chosen one can deflect Beliar's wrath in favor for rewards. Over the years, the Hashishan slowly conquer more and more water spots in Varand, enslaving the nomads defending and settling them. Afterwards, the Hashishin built cities around said spots. This was a wonderful fit because slavery is a primary source of business for the desert people, and strict business is THE cultural philosophy of the Hashishin. It doesn't matter who you are, the only thing that counts for social status is gold. With gold, you can achieve pretty much anything in their society, but you will become a target of greed too. It doesn't matter what or how you do anything to achieve as many resources as possible, because the only repercussions only start counting once you get caught, because then the black mages have to officially prosecute you. Which is highly ironic considering that pretty much every black mage has dirty laundry on them. Meaning, anything that gets money, anything that could mean money, even corpses, are fair game. Even breaking the law is absolutely A-OK. -okay. Just don't get caught doing it, and even if you are caught, a hefty bribe for the priest can take care of that issue quickly. Everyone is corrupt. If you end up careless, you will be assassinated, robbed, or even enslaved by your own family and friends. Everything and everyone is fair game. This is absolute for the Hashishin. 
Their only diplomatic associate are the orcs, who contracts them to hunt down refugees, rebels or other potential threats. The Ashishan capture them, enslave them and sell them back to the orcs. During the Second Great Orc War, the orcs paid Zubin 50,000 gold pieces, perhaps even several times, to join their army in conquering Verand. After the war was over, the Ashishan have already taken control over all of Verand's water spots, effectively making them the new undisputed rulers of the desert. Because in a desert, if you are without water, you're dead. Every other culture except for the orcs consider them to be the worst of the worst. Yet the assassins claim themselves to be nothing more than humble victims of Enos's burning sun. We Hashishin are a humble people, oppressed by Eno's scorching curse. The merciless sun lets almost nothing grow in this country. You could say that we live hand to mouth. Naturally, there are some creature comforts, but those are reserved for Zuban and his black mages. Zuban is our great leader. He is ancient and possesses the power of Belia. We pay him tribute, and he keeps Belia's wrathful gaze away from us. The privilege of magic, just like everything else in their culture, is tied to money. If you don't have money, you can't learn magic, you can't learn how to fight, and you will likely lose your freedom at the very least because someone gets the great idea of enslaving you. If you have money, your options are next to limitless. Your only chance if you ever get sold into slavery and you don't have any resources is to become a gladiator and fight for your freedom, just like in orc culture. To accentuate this, the Ashishan did something unimaginable. They developed a new, unique combat style and form of dual wielding blades. And developing new fighting styles is something that hasn't been done in over 2000 years. So all in all, who are the Ashishan? The Ashishan are worshippers of Belia under the leadership of Zubin residing in Verand. They are deeply influenced by the Orc culture but have twisted it into an extreme form of greed, discarding anything relating to honor. Wherever they appear, slavery follows. And that is also a major reason why no other culture bothers to deal with them. They can be your greatest ally if you have gold or your worst enemy if you don't. They specialize in assassination, one-on-one -on -one combat, black magic, poison and treachery. They call themselves enemies to Enos as well as claiming to be his victims. So ultimately, the Hashishin actually should not exist the way they are presented in Gothic 3. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. Once again, I remind everyone that Gothic 3 was unfinished. It wasn't even halfway done when it was released. And the entire tribe of the Ashishin is one of the major plot holes that doesn't have enough explanation to logically exist. The way they are presented in Gothic 3 doesn't add up with anything we know of Verunt or King Robar or any other civilization in Gothic. Someone would have eventually taken an issue with the tribe of slavers. And in particular the water mages would have mentioned them at some point I think. But suddenly having them as the primary force of Verunt easily capable of rivaling the orcs, that just, that blows up the limits of how far I'm willing to go. And thus, recently. After the end of the Second Great Orc War, Zubin took a particular interest in ancient artifacts and magic ore, realizing the value in both. But that is a story for another day.